Hi, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. This one's for George Hans. Red, the blood of angry men. Black, the dark of ages past. Red, a world about to dawn. Black, the night that ends at last. Okay, so proof the sun is condensed matter and we can do what it does on the surface in free air. So um, I have uh, got a little clip here. It's from a uh, Swedish uh, observatory from the Royal uh, Swedish Academy of Sciences. And it's in the Spanish Observer Observatorio del Roque de los Muchachos of the Institute de Astrofisica de Canaria. Okay, so I'm just going to play this. I've got a wonderful tapestry here from the sort of Rajasthan area of India. Okay, so uh, you can see this granular structure here with these uh, brighter lights here. I will include this video clip at the end of the video and obviously all the links in the video. Why am I showing you this? Well, because I wanted to cross-correlate between the fracture sample here uh, from John Hutchison uh, and the uh, jewel in line. So you can see the jewel here uh, with all the area that was uh, changed greatly. And this this composite image here I shared uh, over two years ago, I think. And what it shows is at the same kind of scales, um, on the outside surface of this condensed matter of uh, fused quartz and on the condensed matter surface of this aluminium uh, from the fracture sample you can see these uh, regular structures uh, which are very similar between the two completely different technologies this is non-contact in air um, this is in air also and uh, both surface effects now I'm going to zoom into these and uh, try and pull out what I want to say here so here's a zoom in to the uh, John Hutchison uh, fracture sample. And uh, you can see that there, there are kind of like these kind of regular areas. And I would say that this is a mesh of uh, exotic vacuum objects that are on the surface. This is something that uh, Kenneth, Shoulders, Kenneth Radford Shoulders said could be possible. And so this has covered the surface and they're interacting on the surface. And I want to bring in the... Um, solar image and maybe I can uh, show you here there are these little black spots here and if I move it on there's another one there and uh, here and right in the center here now the sapphire project has observed this on the uh, composite uh, uh, anode as well and they didn't know what they were so you can see here and there's another one here and you can see the same structures here these uh, dimples as they were on the surface and there's obviously these crevices and so forth now um, uh, here on the edge uh, so you can see this actually wraps all the way around the edge um, in this case uh, we are looking at this is the hard edge of the jewel which came out of the uh, overall uh, um, reactor and you can see this face and this face both have it on but it's not internal to it uh, but you see these same repeating structures this little dimple up here this dent and, and so forth and again I'm going to bring in the um, uh, solar images so you can see these lumps these dark areas these raised bits so you've got a thing here it's cut down with a raised bit in the middle uh, you can examine this in your own time um, and so there's another dark bit here, another dark bit, this one in the center. Extremely similar type of structures going on. Okay, so this is the uh, MFMP Hutchison sample fractal under uh, the scanning electron microscope with EDS of uh, Alan Goldwater at Magic Sound uh, in California. And we really have to thank him for uh, allowing us access to this uh, so that we could study the the sample now i'm just going to go into the uh, sem pdf which i'm going to share uh, to draw out some things here now in these cracks uh, you can see there are these lighter areas and what that generally means when you're doing eds is that those will be heavier elements so let's have a look at what we're seeing there well obviously it's not all aluminium 
Look at what we are seeing. So you've got oxygen obviously would be there. Magnesium, uh, uh, aluminium, chlorine, potassium here. Iron, zinc and lead. Now remember iron, zinc and lead. You're going to need this for the next video that I'm going to do. Here we've got lead again uh, and so forth and so on. So you can, you can study this but you'll find these lighter areas are where the heavier elements are coming in. Now let's go back here and look at the video that I showed you here at the beginning, I'm saying that I believe the lighter areas here, which are in the crevices between these granules, are heavier elements. So let's go back. Um, so here it's saying there's dysporium here. Uh, and, you know, that's a, this is not very high, so I think we probably discount that, but maybe. Uh, again, you've got uh, iron, copper, zinc, lead. Remember these. You're going to need to remember these for the next video. Let's have a look down what we've got here. There's this track coming out of this particle. It seems to be moving and coalescing with this lump over here. Uh, what do we have in the various areas here? Uh, again, uh, iron, iron. Uh, now here we've got iron and lead. Now this is a very interesting structure because um, if you look at the uh, image here, the optical image, here, you can see there are these, in the center of some of these structures, there are these different kind of uh, objects, uh, which are not obviously aluminium. And you might think they're just dirt in there, but when you actually come in here, you can see that th this has got a little bit that comes out, and there's a, there's a kind of like a dent that follows up on the aluminium. Again, there's a little bit that comes out, and there's a dent that follows up. This is kind of in this crevice. It actually fits into this area. Again, you've got a bit up here. It is sitting in this area. So what have we got on 835? 835, okay, so you've got carbon, oxygen. You have basically a, an amorphous material, like we saw on the lion, uh, uh, outside crust, completely amorphous, of silicon, sulfur, iron, copper, uh, and obviously aluminium. Uh, I don't know whether these normally alloy together, do they, into a completely amorphous blob? How does that even happen, uh, where there's no crystals of what, uh, any type whatsoever? But it does seem very regular kind of crystallite structure. Anyway, let's go down. Again, we've got copper, iron, copper, iron, so on. You can have a look at this again in your own time. So what it seems is that on the lumps you have these little dimples. So this little dimple here is 841. 841 uh, has magnesium in it, okay? And it's a higher concentration than any other spot there. So this extra spot here, uh, and you will have to look at this uh, <laughs> in your own time, um, but there are in each of these little depressions, there appears to be heavier elements. Um, that is something that's very interesting. Again, I believe that on the sun, there will be uh, heavier elements in these uh, uh, structures in between the crystallites. Uh, and notice the crystallites kind of, kind of stay in a regular array and they do move around. There seems to be some sort of liquid kind of phase going on. Anyway, uh, we have iron, iron copper, and it's, it's, it's much the same thing. You, you, you'll be able to see this. Now, this particular structure on, on the surface, I talked about before, and there's another video on that. But as you went across it, it the elements got heavier and heavier. So you've got iron, and then you've got silver going on. Um, again, something special about silver. What is special about silver? What is special about copper? Okay, what is special about aluminium? Okay, so aluminium here, aluminium iron, uh, da 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 da. So you can again look in that in your own time. Uh, I've already discussed this in a previous video. These speckles, these regular array of speckles of different elements. Um, and come down here. What do we have here? We have this kind of like area, this slight area over here. And if you look at it, um, there's, a, there's a lump over here in a crevice that is silver. Okay, and the bits that are on these areas in, in between the lumps is iron. Okay, so it does look heavier, like heavier elements are forming where the material is in the crevices. What is going on? Um, and we've discussed this before. Uh, and how the iron is only on these pinched ridges. Some extremely strange field effects are going on. Again, 
magnesium in a regular array. Uh, and uh, there we go. So you can look at that in your own time. Anyway, so uh, essentially what I am saying here um, is that the surface of the sun is not a gas ball. It is not plasma. It is a condensed matter uh, material, either a, a liquid. Um, that is definitely what's going on. And the, it's been replicated in two situations in air, uh, in extremely low temperatures relatively. Uh, this one never got above 1080, and this one was in free air, and typically it was cool to the touch. So whatever's going on on the sun, you can uh, simulate the same kind of process in free air. So the implications of this are frankly astounding. The sun is not a ball of gas. Forget it. That is over. That is over. The sun is condensed matter. It is like Lena. It's low energy nuclear reactions that must be going on. I believe it is condensed matter. As in Lena, elements heavier than iron can be synthesized by the sun. I believe that is what's going on and what you're seeing in those crevices in uh, over here. These are heavier elements, uh, okay? Therefore, no need for Big Bang or supernova to make heavy elements. Experiments done by such persons as Tesla, Hutchison, Shoulders, Fleischmann and Pons, Piantelli, Matsumoto, Chilani, Adamenko, Ralka, Parkamov and Lyon and many more have been replicating what the sun does uh, in some cases for over 100 years. Here's the killer. We can study how the sun really works for a few hundred dollars. And with that, I'll thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video.